That's all life was, was a party. Tuesday night, the Goose and Gander, Wednesday, the Owl Lounge. We had a place to go every night, and then you hang with this crew that in, in, in another town, you made friends, but it was all based around drugs and party. And it was fun, it was fun, okay? And, and I didn't realize that I was going nowhere in life but I knew I was having a good fucking time. I mean, it was fun, you know. You could drink and get high and not be a drug addict, but once you cross that fine line into addictive behavior or addiction, once you cross the line from social use to addiction, there's no turning back. I come from a broken home. And, you know, back then, they didn't have all the self-help groups. They didn't have, uh, you know, the talk shows and h how parents should deal with divorce. You know, they had to go by instinct. And a lot of parents' instinct was fucked up back then. You know, my parents, you know, during divorce, like, you know, I remember, like, we'd see my dad every other week, you know, or whatever, you know, and, you know, hey, dad's coming, and, you know, we're first, second grade, I'm standing in the window, oh, here comes dad, and then all of a sudden as he's walking up the driveway, police come and arrest him. So my mom uses us to set up my father to have him arrested. So, you know, who's wrong? My mom for set, using us to set him up or my dad for not paying child support. My mom would, uh, she took my myself, my brother, my sister to my grandmother's house on my father's side you know, rang the doorbell, my grandmother, my father's side, opens the door, and my mother goes, you take him, I don't want him, I can't handle him. You know, so as a kid, that's abandonment. You know, you, you have abandonment issues. You can't be abandoned as an adult, obviously, because you have keys. Get in your car and go the fuck, leave. So you can't be abandoned. But as a kid, that kind of scars you. Oh shit, the one parent that's watching us doesn't even want us. You know, I didn't get the attention I needed and deserved as a child because children need a, a certain amount of attention and affection. Fuck, you know, you know, uh, toys, this and that. The bottom line is a kid will grow up usually to be a better kid when they get the attention and the affection and all positive stuff. So I did whatever I could to get attention and it was always negative because that's the only way I knew how to get it as you know, I would do fucked up things, you know, even, you know, I, I remember I went to a, uh, me and my cousin, we were young, we went to the school and just broke as many windows as we possibly could. We were just breaking windows. It was so much fun just watching the rocks shatter through the windows. I, I couldn't have had more fun. Next guy coming to the stage, absolutely fucking hilarious, man. One of the best, uh, he's written for the Oscars and he just did work on Chris Rock's new movie, which is coming out. Absolutely hilarious. Start clapping right now for the hilarious Rich Voss. Let him hear. I got 27 years sober. Uh, for no alcohol and drugs. 27 years. Uh, stop for the non-clapping. Uh, <laughs> I got gambling to fall back on. So I'm a bad gambler. I'm really a bad gambler. My daughter just turned uh, six years old. I threw her birthday party at the horse track. <laughs> All the kids were crying and going, calm down, I'll pay you back. <laughs> Comedy for me was just to, to, to cover and, and deal with the pain I was going through as a child, going, living with, going through a divorced family. So comedy was, hey, I don't have, to, I, it was an, an escape. Okay, so I love comedy throughout my life. Drugs, just another escape. It led to me partying, growing up, not going to school, just going there to, to get high, sell drugs, sell pot, 
got out of school, you know, bounced around job to job, doing drugs, partying. I had a big painting business. Uh, and I used to, then, you know, you get into coke and partying. I mean, I was doing so much coke. I remember uh, in the winter, people would ask me, I would line up people. I would line up houses for the spring and summer. And throughout the winter, people would give me deposits because I had like one of the biggest painting businesses in town. I would get deposits and I would spend all the money on drugs, rent, party, and whatever, because I didn't work in the winter really. And then when it came time to paint our houses, you know, I was supposed to paint it with gray paint, Benjamin Moore. Back then it was like 16 a gallon. So I already spent the money. I mean, I had old Benjamin Moore cans that I would just pour a shitty paint into and I'd get onto the job saying, you know, you're, you're painting the house, they think with Benjamin Moore, by the time you're done painting the house and driving down the fucking block, it's already peeling. And then I started smoking Freebase, crack they called it, Freebase. And for two or three years, it was just a total, like, in, in the total thrust of addiction. I was a crack addict back in the day. I would, have done, I would have done anything to get high. I mean, I never said, you know. <laughs> One time I just kissed it like that. <laughs> it, didn't, it didn't cross my gum line. <laughs> Crack addicts will try to sell you anything. Crack addicts will try to sell you anything. And I got a washing machine door. <laughs> I said, you know, I, I mean, there's a million stories, but eventually you hit a bottom. You're like, I can't fucking live like this anymore. I'm going to kill myself or end up in jail or a nut house. Uh, you know, I already suffered from anxiety, which I'm having now doing this. I'm getting, whenever you talk about your life, you get fucking anxiety. Uh, I, I hit, told him, I said, I got to go into rehab. I remember calling this booking agent. I go, uh, look, I'm going into rehab tomorrow. Do you have, can I do a show somewhere tonight so I can get some money to go get high one last time? I mean, book me at this club, BF Packies on Route, Route 9 in Jersey. I got 60 bucks, went to New York, bought cigarettes, four vials of crack, smoked them till sunup, Drove to rehab. I went to a place called New Hope Foundation in Marlboro, New Jersey, which saved my life. And from that morning till now, which is 27 years later, I have not picked up a drug or a drink. The desire to not drink or get high is stronger than the, the desire to do it. And if I do ever get, you know, uh, an urge, which very seldom happens, but urge urges pass in 30 seconds. I was having a cigarette once, this old man staring at me. He's like, you should quit smoking. My brother lost the lung. I go, you don't quit bothering me. Your brother's gonna lose a brother. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on this Nicorette gum right now for nine years. <laughs> I might start smoking again just to get off this fucking gun. I'm addicted to anything I fucking like. I mean, I smoked, I was up to three packs of cigarettes a day when I quit. I quit like eight years ago. But I've been on nicotine gum nonstop. I eat, you know, it's nonstop. It's the lesser of two evils. You know, sometimes I fall asleep with the gum in my mouth. Or I wake up in the middle of the night to have a piece of gum and I'll stay up for like an hour. Even though I haven't got high for 27 years, I still have some of the habits and behaviors of a drug addict. Sometimes I still act like a drug addict even though I don't do drugs, okay? Uh, a couple of weeks ago, I was driving through Dunkin' Donuts through the drive-thru. <clears throat> going through the drive-thru, I ordered a coffee and a donut, right? So I, I put in my order, I pull up to the window, the dude opens the window, and he's holding the coffee and the donut. And I'm holding the money. And I'm looking at him, and he's looking at me. <laughs> I'm going, look, pal, I'm not giving you the money. 
until you give me at least a donut, okay? I don't know you like that. Give me the donut, I'll give you some money. Give me the coffee, I'll finish payment, and get the fuck out of here. If, if the product's good, I'll come back. We're arguing for like five minutes. I wore him down, he finally gave me the donut, and I drove away. So I don't smoke, I don't drink, I haven't eaten red meat in 21 years, because so I do everything in excess. You know, you go upstairs, I don't have three pairs of sneakers, I have 23 pairs of sneakers. Well, it's just, it's just dope fiending and drug addict behavior in other forms, that's all. I found myself growing though. I was playing a course a couple of weeks ago, I was on the road, I'm playing this course. One, I got on for free. They, got, they knew who I was, and I think I plugged them on radio, but I got on for free. So we're playing nine, we play nine holes. I was leaving after, I was only gonna play nine. So I get on for free. At the end of nine holes, a starter comes up to us. and says, hey, there's a tournament here. You guys gotta play the same nine again. We're sorry, but here's four free passes for everybody to come back. So he handed me four free passes. And I'm thinking, I already played for free. I'm not coming back to Kentucky, and my dope addict mind is, ah, maybe I should hold on to these. This is four free rounds of golf, so I can do something with them, right? Sell them, give them away, make... Yeah, I can benefit from four free rounds of golf. And I'm going, ah, that's just such dope addict behavior. First of all, I play for free. Right, right then, I should have said to the guy, oh, nah, keep them, I played free, and I'm not even playing the back nine anyhow. But old dope addict Voss takes the four free rounds. Then 30 seconds later, I go, I can't do this. And the guy I was playing with, just some kid, I go, here, here's four rounds. Now you have eight. And I gave them to the kid. Not, you know, I'm not going to get anything out of it, but there was a little bit of growth in my life after 27 years uh, that I didn't fucking hoard those four rounds of golf put them in my stupid computer bag, bring them home, never use them, but no, I have four rounds of golf in Kentucky someday in the future. Because don't, don't get me wrong, I get shit all over this house that I'll never use, but I know I do have it.